All right. So recently, Black Forest was added to the 1v1 pool. And I was gone for two weeks in Germany, so I missed our, our normal low elo legends cast, right? So we're going to mix it up today, at least for those on stream. We're, we're going all over the place. But I wanted to do 1v1 Black Forest, and here we are. So Black Forest has played on Explored, and clearly J59JW is aware of how to play Black Forest. And oh, man, look at this from Blue's perspective. Now, that was a moment for Blue to possibly be confused by things because the sheep were red, and oh, I love it. Yes, this is so good. So, red comes forward immediately to wall the choke point between the players, which is a very common strategy. <gasps> very good strategy on this map, but red also snuck a villager here. So, again, it's ranked play. It's 800 ELO, but it is 1v1 Black Force. Shout out to everyone who voted for this in the map pool. Now, I want to talk about this. So I'm not like the biggest Black Forest guy, but over the years, I have learned some very hard lessons about not walling up, right? No, don't chop the tree. This is a mistake we'll talk about a little bit later. Actually, wait a second. That's not a mistake anymore. And I'll tell you why later on in the game. Uh, anyways, back. let me finish my thought. So I used to be like blue. Right? Because I would think, let me get my sheep. And then I'm not going to wall. I'm just going to let the other Black Forest nerds wall up. And the, um... Don't get greedy, Red. Don't get... Red, don't get greedy here. But yeah, I'm going to make sure my economy is better than his. And then I'll wall later. That's what I would think. And then... I got rushed enough times or villagers snuck in enough times where I now, if I were to play this, would always fight to wall up the middle. Now, Red is behind in villagers. Red has struggled to keep the vills rolling. Red also... <laughs> okay, Red maybe went too crazy here. Red also doesn't have the scout in, so cannot even get these sheep. <laughs> I don't know if anyone watching can relate to this. But, like, Red went too crazy with the strategy. Anyways, we're gonna have... <laughs> we're gonna have this villager who's walled in over here. And then this villager's going the other direction. And might actually die because there's no loom and there's a wolf there. I don't know if 800 ELO knows you can get hill bonuses on wolves, but this would be the time. It's either that or Red has to try and wall this villager in. This is not gonna be good for this villager. <gasps> no way! You gotta hit the palisade. No way! Dang! Okay. Wow. Red's a beast. So we have villager on the right. Boom. Walled in. Protected. Villager on the left. Boom. Walled in. Protected. And now Red has no food underneath the TC. And also doesn't have enough wood for a lumber camp. And now is gonna go out and get a boar. And had to send a villager to get some sheep. It's okay. Meanwhile, Blue... Has Blue even scouted the walls? Blue doesn't give a crap. Blue doesn't care at all. Blue's just like, let me take all my precious food. So, I think if you're a player like Blue... Oh, God. Oh, the scout got brought over to kill that. Wow. Okay, well, now the scout is weak. But the villager can move out. Uh, if you're a player like Blue, playing it as Blue's playing is fine. But, you know, you just want to make sure you do something really effective with Fast Feudal. Or with a boom, right? Because you could realistically scout this, wall it up, go fast castle, and be fine. My gut feeling right now is that Red's economy is way too bad for any type of rush to be super effective. But I love how Red had a strategy and is trying to... Oh my goodness. Is trying to execute on that strategy. Here we are. All right. Um... So, so you essentially have two idle villagers and you are five villagers behind. Six villagers, actually. So that makes you eight villagers behind, right? If you ta add on the two that aren't even working. So this is not good. Let's look at the resources collected. Oh my god! Oh! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't expect it to be that bad. <laughs> I did not expect it to be that bad. Blue has collected over three times the amount of resources at this stage. Dang. 
Okay. Well, you know, the efficiency of the villagers is also really important. Look at the worker efficiency overall here. 86% versus 53.2%. And then this is last minute. I have to hand it to Blue, though. Like, Blue's build order has been really sick. But again, Blue hasn't tried to do anything fancy. And now Blue sees the walls. All right, so Blue's just going to sit there and stare at them. Um, we'll see what Blue wants to do from here. I think this is Fast Castle for Blue. I think Blue will... Uh, it, might, it might not be, like, an actual Fast Castle, but it will certainly be a play towards Castle. Now Red's economy is looking a little bit better. Um, actually, this is an amazing pond. If uh, Red would have considered docking, I think it would have been worth it. Let's see how Red plays this. Red's now housed. The scout's still scouting around. These villagers are still walled in. Okay, so I want to tell you guys why I freaked out when Red chopped this tree. It took the devs uh, years to finally fix this. But they recently did. I think within the past year. So basically, um, since this is played on Explored, in the old days, if a tree was chopped and you had scouted a region or it was explored, it would show in the Fog of War. But you see how it doesn't now? You see how it shows the, that the tree has not been chopped? And actually, on the Definitive Edition, because of the way the graphics work with the golds and the stones... Up until recently, this is something I had complained about for like, well, ever since the game was introduced and or brought up in 2019, and I'm glad they fixed it. Um, on Explored, you could even tell if they were taking a certain area of gold or stone. Even if you had never double-checked it again, just scouting it once would tell you if they're taking it because they would eventually degrade. So I'm really happy the devs changed that. And okay, we're going to have Blacksmith, we're going to have Market. I mean, I love the fact that Red wants to sneak the Vills. But whatever archers are going to have to come out of here, it's going to have to happen fast. Because Blue will be able to drop a castle once Blue makes it to Castle Age. Um, the devs have done an amazing job. Yeah, I, I agree. They've made some really good changes. Obviously, I, I still am critical of certain things. And they're... in. I think the game has started to reach a power creep standpoint in terms of balance. A lot of the newer civilizations have gotten really, really strong, and it's a bit scary for me, too, because that means the other civilizations got to start getting really strong, and then it's like this back-and-forth, back-and-forth thing that could lead to some potential problems down the line. Like, tweaks like that are just awesome for the game. There's so many old, like, it's not a bug, it's a future things that we had. And we still have, don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of certain things that have been phased out, like the deleting mangonels while firing uphill, deleting mangonels to do more damage, crap like that. I'm glad they got rid of. All right, so there's the archer range. He has deleted the wall, and now the villager's going to drop an archer range. Blue is on the way to Castle Age. Now, Blue does not have Loom. Now, something you could do if you're blue is you could scout for this, but I don't think blue has actually been snuck before. Sneaked, snuck, snucked, sneaked upon, something like that. But yes, the timing on it's key. So you know, my issue with it for red is that red's economy looked very weak behind it. And so the few late time was delayed, the archers could be delayed, and then that might not work. I guess this villager is just like there just in case for later on. Let's look at the resources collected now. Yeah, still a pretty big gap. If you were to sneak, though, against any other civilization, they probably wouldn't have enough for a castle right now because they'd be playing it into a boom. And then you might have more of a chance. But let's see what Red does. Oh, God. Red's just now making the archers. Oh, God. Okay. I think Red wants to drop another archer range. Don't trap your villager with the next archer range, please. Oh, God, you're going to get housed as well. Okay. 1644 castle age time is pretty sick. 
And there's a second town center. There's a third town center. And still enough stone to be able to drop a castle at some point if you need to. <laughs> He's adding more archers on the other side. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Red's like, we will hit him from both sides. You won't know what's coming. <laughs> uh, I mean, if Blue wasn't playing so competent, if Blue wasn't so good, this might actually be possible, but... Even if you kill five villagers at this point, like, let's even make it ten villagers. The economy for blue is good enough to just catch up because of the town centers. Is the rest of the day low elo cast, T90? No, no, no. We're going to be all over the place. Would be really good for red to maybe scout as well, but maybe he doesn't want to let his opponent know that he's in here. Thirty-two vills. And the name of the game from Blue is Farms. You're going to drop a castle anywhere. It might make sense to actually drop a castle on Red's walls. And then Red would have to wall up behind. Love the idea from Red. I really would love for this to work, but I think Red has made this far too complicated. If the archer ranges were in the same spot, I think Red would have do a better job at keeping the ranges producing, right? But it's gotten too fancy with the villagers splitting sides. Really struggling to keep things going here. 38 villagers now for blue. Blue's got a massive lead with eco. Think about it. When red eventually clicks up to castle age, this TC can never create a vill that whole time. And blue already has a vill lead with three town centers. Blue doesn't even know. Like, <laughs> it's been so creative. And yet so ineffective from Red. Hey, Red. Maybe make some archers. Okay, gonna make archers out of this one. Maybe. There we go. Has to do some damage now. Has to. Yeah, I like... I honestly don't mind the fact that Red is docked. Uh, fish, fishing into fish traps is actually an underrated move. Uh, you see it a lot from high-level players. Obviously, though, this is going to come in so late. I think even if it was like 600 ELO, this would be late, right? I just find it so funny that Blue is no clue. Blue is no clue, and yet Blue is going to be fine. Doesn't even matter. But there is a chance that blue freaks out, right? Like, these farmers are going to be very exposed. Come on, red. <laughs> what's the what's the magic number, man? <laughs> what's the magic number of archers? 20? Maybe it'll be 20 because you can only fit 10 in each archer range. But it might have reached a point now where red says, I need to get to castle age first. So these can become crossbowmen. Which means red has to wait even longer. Like honestly, that's my guess. Yeah, I think the castle position for blue is the most important thing here. Especially because all these farmers are so far away. If these guys were to get found by crossbowmen, you never know. <gasps> Ooh, this is gonna be awkward. Now, this is not something blue will see because that is a spectator bug. Oh, man. <gasps> okay, I think Blue's going to eventually find this. Yeah, Red will see Blue's house before Blue can see Red's archery range. Because you need to complete the house to get any vision. The villager might actually spot it. Come on, Red. Make a move. Actually, that's the worst thing for you, though. The last thing you want to do is attack... One villager there. You want to hit a group at, at the same time. Oh, God. All the farming eco is going to be over here. Oh, if only Red could see that. Red's not scouting. Okay, re-walled it. Okay, can now see the villager. Okay, this is Blue's perspective. So Red knows about that. This is what Blue can see. And now the archers hop out. To attack that villager because red figures well i've been spotted 
Okay, now blue just so happens to be making castle here, and I think blue just noticed where this came from. And now red's on the way to castle age. Will red keep moving? No! Where are you going? Ah! Ugh. You saw the mining camp, bro! <laughs> like, Ren wants to be sneaky, but he's too sneaky. This is the time to fight. Ah, oh, sad times. That could have been denied. All right. 27 minutes into the game. Here come the archers. And here... Oh, baby! Here come the archers from this side as well. It's a pincer. Yeah! How do you like it, Poles? Get off your farms. This is my lands now. Dang. Now, we got to see Blue as Blue just rang the town bell. So the whole eco is idle. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Guys, we got to see Blue before there was any attack, right? Now we get to see how Blue reacts now that this surprise has happened. And honestly, it is this attack has surpassed my expectations. It really has. Also, there's a stable here too, which means you could make knights against any type of siege. Okay, well, that hurts. That's painful. Stables now for blue. Blue did bank up a lot of resources. Let's look at the total idle time. But worker efficiency last minute. 1.9%. 1.7%. Blue needs to make knights. Red needs to get upgrades on these things. If red doesn't get crossbow and bodkin, the knights can clear. You need to get upgrades. That is the most important thing you can do right now if you're red. Now red who walled this in, again, really wants to keep the villagers alive, is going to go double siege workshop. Oh, think about it this way. Why do you go to Castle Age? Make your units stronger or your economy stronger. If you're not researching anything in Castle Age, you might as well stay in Feudal Age. Hey, okay, now... Okay, so Slotcha Privilege has finished. So now the knights cost less... Uh, gold and there's crossbowmen from this archery range and I just love to see Bod Canero here if possible. Blue's gonna have five knights with one upgrade. We'll see what the long-term plan is. Guys, the worker efficiency last minute is 0.3%. Blue's entire economy is idle because of this attack. This is so epic. <laughs> and honestly... If blue, remember earlier I said if blue wasn't poles, it'd be easier for red. I think the fact that blue is poles was actually good for red because the farming eco had to be out here on the full works. Oops, I went to the wrong spot. It makes me very sad. Very, very sad we did not see Bod Canero. Bod Canero is such a big attack upgrade there. That could have made the difference between winning or losing that fight. But red still has kept blue's whole economy idle and like blue now it's like i don't have the gold to make anything oh wait has unrung the bell okay all right the eco is going to go back to work for the most part um got more crossbowmen from this range and here comes the army from blue blue can't win that fight blue doesn't have the numbers all right the good news for blue though is that the army's back to uh not the army's back to work the army's gonna die uh, the eco is back to work. But I don't know if Blue has it in him to be able to fix this. Like, a lot of people get so freaked out, they just resign because it's so stressful. Especially when you had such a nice plan, too, and you were feeling so nice about life with your economy, and now it's all gotten ruined. And then you might feel a little frustrated and embarrassed about the situation because you could have maybe scouted it. Isn't this the beauty of low elo, though, guys? Because everything I was saying before was like, there's no way this works. It's too late from red. But man, things like this can have so much of an effect. 72 villagers versus 59 right now. And man, oh man, is this close. Okay, so we're going to have pikemen and rams from the north now. And then knights and crossbow from here. And I'll give a lot of credit to red here. Because red has still been paying attention to the economy. Okay. Blue obviously isn't feeling comfortable to really move out much. Blue's going to take a fight here. 
but oh god the knights are trapped wait are they actually trapped i can't tell no they're not okay oh god okay oh god red oh god okay well you know what that that didn't look too good for red He's like, I'm more of a knight player, actually. I just happened to random into the Britons, and I figured I should make archers. So, uh, don't judge my micro too much. That's a lot of knights from blue. But now there's going to be some pikemen as well. And blue does have bloodlines, is getting chain barding armor, has 14 knights in the queue. The Polish unique tech could save blue here from this attack. That's a lot of knights, and it's a wonderful what you can do when you actually send your villagers back to work, isn't it? Blue's gonna clear this. Red's gonna go for a big ram push, though. Doesn't have enough army over here for my liking. Also doesn't have any pikemen upgrades. But did wall this up. The villager needs to run, though. She needs to hide, because if she dies, then this, this whole side... Oh, okay. Well. Alright, that's fine. 66 villagers versus 72. All right, crossbowmen are going to be on the other side there. Blue's obviously going to be very focused here. Blue does know about these ranges, but hasn't been too worried about it. And I would love to see some attack. <laughs> I'd love to see some some uh, armor upgrades as red hops out of the ranges and attacks the houses there. I'm wondering how attentive blue is. Great job from blue to recover here. It feels like Blue noticed that and is going to send some stuff over here. Oh, my God. You're kidding me. Oh, Red, you've got... Red, you're amazing. <laughs> you're amazing. I love this player so much. Look at this. Choo-choo. He's going to try and go for the castle, which is just not going to work. I'm sorry. It's just... There's no way that's ever possible here. You don't have enough pikemen. Does hop out of the rams with the pikemen. I think it would have been a less ambitious goal to try and take the town centers. Loot ran the town bell there, so everyone's trying to be safe. As, as I stated before, it's so cheap to make the knights, if you're poles, that the pikemen will eventually die, the knights will eventually run over everything. Red really let themselves down here with the lack of blacksmith upgrades in this game. But it's not over, guys. It's not over. The attack's not going to end the game, but it certainly is going to give Red an advantage here. Because look at this now. Red says, you know what? All right, that's fine. My eco's been untouched. My eco's been fine. How's your eco look, buddy? And so Blue is, like, still making knights because Blue's like, this guy keeps attacking me. He attacks me on the right? He attacks me on the, on the left? I guess it's, like, north, south, whatever. Anyways, like, Blue is super paranoid about the next attack. And Red, please tell me you know what to do here. You have, you know exactly where Blue's castle is. You've got walls down. You're dropping a castle within Treb range. No, 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 no. Cancel the pikes and go up to Imp. If you rush up to Imp, this could be perfect. You just have to know about it. You have to think about it. Think about how much Imp can help you here. Because now, this becomes a race to trebuchets, right? It will actually help Red that this barracks is going to be taken out, which is the funny thing. Because Red will get the food then for Imperial Age. What an amazing game this is. Two very different strategies, both players playing their hearts out. There you go. Now the pike can get canceled. Click Imp. Please. It'd make me so happy. Click Imp. Stonks. He's up. He's going up. Perfect. Now, you know what your opponent's making, right? He's all in on knights. You know you can take out the castle and probably the buildings. You need to build barracks right here and prep the pikemen. The red clicks squires, and after that he clicks supplies. But pikemen would be epic here. Worth pointing out that supplies does not make it any cheaper to make pikemen. Only the militia line. But still... Now look at blue. Blue's like, okay, I'm back in boom mode. So blue's going to make a lot of ills. Uh, blue is spending a lot of time clearing up the forward base from red. And um, I'm a little concerned for red just because red isn't really like really being aggressive with the barrack building here. Isn't making any pikemen yet and is also getting archer armor. So I'm not sure if red knows 
the best play here, but I can tell you this has still been an epic game. I'm glad to say long bowman. <laughs> long bowman. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that makes me a little sad because red can't make trebuchets, but maybe red will do both. How Longbow is probably the best composition for the Britons. Maybe some trebuchets mixed in could be nice. And we also have crossbowmen. Okay, so Red's not finished. Red's like, this is not enough. I need to still... He hasn't found this yet. So I need to still have some type of a threat from this building. Okay. Blue is on the way to the Imperial Age. Pikeman play was great, Red. It was great. It was just simply the numbers problem. You could fix the numbers problem and then, you know, win the race to the next age. You can take out all these buildings with trebuchets. I still believe that Red will do both. But Red has now queued five trebuchets behind the longbows, but is canceling the longbows. Is canceling the longbows. Is also getting ballistics. What's the plan for Blue? Can Blue see anything here? Blue sees the palisade walls. Actually could have attacked the palisade walls and broken in a long time ago. We have another castle now from red. Man, this is an epic game. I can't wait, though, for red to run into this area of the eco of blue. It might be at the perfect time, right? Because blue just assumes at this point, I've dealt with everything. Blue didn't know that that archery range was there. Okay, there's the first trap. Now, I always say don't trickle trap, but in this type of situation, there's no real bad thing about immediately going after their castle. You don't need to surprise them here. You just got to go for it while you have the time. There's also pikemen, and there's the halberdier upgrade, which is awesome. And now I'm wondering, as we see cab archers from blue, if blue will know what to do. Now, blue is now going to attack the palisade walls. But has to actually delete their own walls in order to get through and I'm not sure if Blue thinks about that right now because of the pressure also very awkward pathing here I think it's very possible that Red will not be able to run in front of the castle because there's only I think there's only a tile on this side um okay the longbows have hopped out Blue deleted it Oh, God, he attacked the wrong one. Okay, Blue's gonna run in. Blue's gonna kill those trebs. Blue blue might save the castle. It's gonna be very close. Blue's repairing the castle. Nice job from Blue. What a game. What a game. Look at the resources for Blue, by the way. Polish economy is just busted. I talk about it all the time, man. They've got so many bonuses. But here come the helps. This is what we wanted to see from Red for a reason. Also, Bracer's in, right? So that really helps the castle. And then Halbs are the direct counter there. Blue's Cav, and I think Blue's struggling to know what to do. I still can't wait for this. This is going to make me so happy. Like, now would actually be the time for Red. Now that he's kind of got Blue where he wants him, now would be the time to run in with that other force. Still making longbows, still making Halbs. And now Blue's struggling, and now Blue clicks Cavalier, but that castle could go down, guys. This really puts Blue under pressure to go get that next Treb. Look at how much damage the castle's done. The castle has over 25 kills. Red will never remember the side archers. At least I wouldn't remember them. No, no, no. Red will remember. Other players might not, but the player that sneaks like this will definitely remember that. Obviously, has to work very hard on this, though. This is the most important area of the map. And if once the castle goes down for blue, red could maybe push up that hill. Blue, though, with the cavalry archers, has gone made a very good decision, actually, because it's a counter to the halbs now. And unit control is awkward when there's castles on both sides. Okay, we now have Yeoman and Warwolf coming in at the same time. Both very helpful technologies, obviously. Uh, Yeoman helps the longbows. And then Warwolf helps the traps. That said, Red is not repairing this. So it might not even complete the upgrade. And man, oh man, is the pathing awkward here for the trebuchets for Red. Oh, it is being repaired now? No, it won't complete. So no Yeoman, but Warwolf is in. And 
Actually, that's helpful if you want to go for the Trebor. I was going for the castle instead. I think blue is, uh, red is throwing. Red is throwing. Uh, red's longbows. They're supposed to be far away. Not right up next to it. Red is falling apart. Red is falling apart, but Warwolf is in, so Red could take some of the trebs. This is huge, actually. This is very important. Even the Cav Archers have gone down as well, but there needs to be halbs here, Red. Q's kind of climbing, but the trebs are exposed. 110 population versus 120. What a grind this game has been. But still, the resources look so good for Blue. And Blue's going to take out all the trebs. And now here come the crossbows, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Uh, Red's going to complete this castle as well. And let's see if Blue ever notices this. Okay, now they have a lot of range, right? Because they're Britons. Let's see what Blue does here. Because remember, Blue wants to kill... It wants to win the game right here. Red, please send more vills. Red, send more vills, please. Finish the castle, please. Blue is no clue, man. Blue is no clue. Blue's losing the entire farming eco. Red, please send more vills. This is where you just... <laughs> you just don't pay attention to this. You hope it's doing what you want. Send more vills. Okay, there go more vills. This castle's huge. Because Blue's trying to trap down this one, but now this one will fire upon everything that's here. This is actually massive. No way, dude. <laughs> this is one of the best games I've ever seen. No way. This is amazing. And look, Blue is to leave now. Oh my word. One of the traps goes down. I think Blue may have noticed this now. So Blue might be going back to, to find it. But no, I actually don't think Blue's noticed it. The power of the sneak, ladies and gents. Red has the eco lead. Red has a pretty big army count. And now Red wants to wall this. Uh, way too close, actually, to... Well, actually... Um, uh, I mean, it's something. You have more of a choke point now. All right. Well, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. But yeah, now obviously you're going to want more trebuchets again. You can see, like, the castle here is 62 kills. The other castle before it went down for red had, like, 40. So castles are so important. But guys, Blue didn't notice this at all. This group of Arbalest, 37 eco kills. 39 eco kills now. Blue still doesn't know. And I'm sure it's easy for everyone to say, like, how does he not notice? Because now it's really wandered far in. But it's a tunnel vision, and he's probably constantly looking at this. Crazy. This is a masterpiece from Red. And, okay, now Blue noticed. The good news for Blue is Blue still has insane resources, but going down to 40 villagers means you better spend those resources fast. Wow, that was so good from Red, man. I, I love this game so much. Okay, now the arbs will run away. Cab Archer should win the fight now just because of the HP. And now Red's pushing in the middle as well. Ugh. It's, like as I said before, a masterpiece. This gate has 5 HP, which is kind of funny. Alright. Yep, Arbalest get cleared up. But they did their job. They did what they were created for. And now Blue has to go to the front. 19 Cavalry Archers for Blue. It definitely has more resources, but spending your resources is very difficult when micro is also difficult. And everything you have to do in this upgrades. You guys know how tough this game can be. But as long as there's more help production from red, I think red has it now. The blue, of course, has to come all the way over here with the cav archers. Red won't mind that because that allows the middle push to be more successful. Houses will start to go down. Stables will start to go down. And <laughs> Red resigns with 60 population. Realizes his opponent has won the game. That was a treat, man. I'm so happy that I saw that game. Uh, maybe I need to cast lower ELO players when we're not on Tuesdays. I don't know if people try and avoid us or if we just got lucky. But dang, man. I simply just hopped into this game because I saw, hey, there's a 1v1 Black Forest game. What ELO is it? Oh, it's 800 ELO? Sure, we'll give it a shot. 
What a great game from Red. Red was so far behind in this game. But the attacks just freaked Blue out. Blue looked like a much better player in the mid game. But it's very easy to look like a beast when no one's attacking you, right? Red created chaos in Blue's economy. There was never really any massive concerns for Red's economy throughout the middle of the game as well. And I liked how Red would go like, Oh, you found me here? Great, I'm going to hit you here. Oh, you found me here? Great, I'm going to hit you here. And then Blue's like, Oh, I'm finally fine. Runs to the middle, wins that battle, and then what changes it? The next army. God, that was amazing. That was so, so good. And actually, look at that, guys. Look at the total resources collected. Who would have thought we would have got to this point? 58,349 versus 58,524. J59JW, that was a treat. Thank you so much for that. Even the KD was close. Dang. So what is this? I don't even know. The tech, I guess maybe it always looked like this, but you can see the, the differences in the castle age. Dang, man. Actually, what I could do from here, yeah, this shows you the total worker time at this stage. It shows you how far ahead Blue was before the attacks came in, of course. And there's the APM. If this matters to you, uh, obviously, they're going to be on the slower end of things compared to some of the higher level players we see. But Red knew if I can just get two villagers in there, it won't matter how bad my economy is. Now, obviously, Red got a little lucky that the attacks got as much value as they did because Red was massively behind. So, you know, if you ever want to sneak like this, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, maybe find your sheep first at the very least. But I love the commitment to it there. And that's not the first time and that's not the last time we will see sneak on Black Forest. So if you're playing Black Forest and you're not a player who likes to sneak, scout it. Uh, keep an eye on the walls. If they're already walled, check for it, okay? And I want to see game submissions in the Discord of people who've been successful with sneaking. So if you do sneak like this and it's a fun game, post it in the Discord, of course. But I also want to see it on the flip side, too. I want to see people who've spotted the sneaks because that kind of stuff could be fun, too. Uh, I feel like every time I upload a game like this, it just inspires more and more people to try and play that way. So who knows if we'll ever see 1v1 Black Forest in the map pool. But I want to hear YouTube comments. And if you like this game, if you enjoy Black Forest and want to see more, by the way, uh, I have been looking at some fat sub games recently, so it might not happen this month, but I might dive into more fat slob content around the holidays as a special treat for everybody out there who's been watching me for so long. GG.